What do a cow and I have in common? We're both outstanding in our fields. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to generate a field of wildflowers where the wildflowers are split up into clumps. It creates this nice patchy effect, and it's pretty satisfying to run around in. There's not much to show, so let's get to it. All right, for this one, we're just going to use a PCG graph. So I'll just create the PCG graph, PCG underscore plant scatter tutorial. And I can drag that out into the world. Now, if I open this up, I'll start off with the input node, and I'm going to sample landscape height. I don't need to sample landscape because these are plants that generally go straight up. So pulling the rotation from landscape is kind of unnecessary. So surface sampler. And I'm going to set the points per square meter to 0.1, point extents to 150, 150, 150, looseness 1. And I will set the point steepness to 1 so that these have sharp edges and let me have a little more control, at least visual control, over how these are lining up. I just highlighted everything and hit Q to line them up. So if I debug this, I've got some points, and they already have random density. And this is actually going to control the various patches of flowers. The lower density ones are going to be one type. The higher density ones, the light colored ones, are going to be different. And I'll split up the gradients into various buckets, which will become the other patches. So now I can take this and rotate these patches, because right now they're all sort of on a grid, and they shouldn't be. I'll also scale them, and let me do that with a Transform Points node. So the rotation I'll set from 0 to 360, and the scale, I'm just going to make sure that the locks here are unchecked, and I'm going to uncheck Uniform Scale. And so I'll set the scale from 0.8 at the smallest to 1.5 at the largest. And I'll just leave the z at 1 because I'm only worried about their scale on the x and y axis. Now if I debug this one, there we go. We've got some patches of flowers that look a little bit more random. So now I can just hook this up to self-pruning. And if I debug this one, and let me change it instead of large to small. I want to keep all equal so that it doesn't matter if it's small or large, it's going to have an equal chance of showing up because sometimes small patches of flowers are, are a nice thing. And there we go. These are what I'm going to use for the patches of flowers. So now I need to create the flowers themselves. For that, I'll use another surface sampler, and I'm going to basically check where these large patches match up to smaller bits of flowers and only keep them. I'm going to use this surface sampler and set it down to something small. And be careful when doing this. I know my computer can handle it, but if you haven't worked with a lot of this before, your computer might have some issues. So the point extents are going to be 555, and points per square meter I'm going to set up to 25. And now if I debug this one, I should see a lot of teeny little points, and each one of these is going to become a flower. Well, not each one of these, but each one of these could become a flower. And now all I need to do is an intersection node. And there's one thing I've run into here when doing an intersection node. If I hook up the large points to it first, and then the small points, and debug, I get only the large points. However, if I break this and I hook up the small points, and then the large points, I get what I want. So when you're doing this, make sure that you hook up the smaller individual flower points to the intersection node before the bigger points. And this might change in a future version, but for now, if you run into the case where you're only receiving large points, check that out. One thing you can see here is that the density that I had beforehand on the large points is now gone. So I have no way of segmenting these individual flowers by the patch that they're in. The intersection node calculates density by multiplying the two densities together. So to fix this, I can set the smaller points to density 1 by unchecking apply density to points. Now if I inspect this, and let me select the debug object, 
I can see that the density on every single point is 1. And if I debug it, you can also see that. They're all white. So now if I debug this one, everything should be the density of the larger points. And unfortunately, that's not the case. So what's happening here is the points around the very edge of these boxes seem to have a bit of fall off so that they don't inherit the full density from this point. So I've found a workaround and that is to set density to an attribute. The attribute carries over and then I reset density afterwards. So to do that I'm going to create an attribute operation. And I'll hook this up here in the middle before the intersection node. And I'm going to just take density and put it off to density, let's say density copy. And now after the intersection, I'll do another attribute operation. And this time I will take density copy and put it into density. So if I inspect this one, I can see that my density copy came over. So when I do this one, I copy the density copy back into density. And if I look at that, it's corrected the issue. Now we have patches of plants. So we can uh, spawn some plants. Let's just go ahead and do it. They aren't going to look good because they're square, but uh, yeah. So to do this, I have my density already. And I'm just going to create a couple manual uh, filters. So instead of a static mesh spawner, I'm going to send everything through a point filter. And if density is greater than a constant threshold, let's say 0.8, I have five different meshes that I want to use. So 0.8 to 1 will be one mesh. And then if I hook this outside filter up, to the next one, it passes in everything that is 0 to 0.8, because 0 0.8 to 1 is going on the inside filter, 0 0.8 is on the outside filter. Then I can do the same thing and take 0 to 0.6 and 0 to 0.4. And this final one just has to be on 0 0.2, because 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 will be on the inside filter, and 0 to 0.2 will be on the outside filter. So I can use that outside filter as the final static mesh. This one's going to be 0 0.4, because it's going to be 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. This one's going to be 0 0.6, because it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So you can see here that it just kind of goes down in cascading order. All right, so now I just need a bunch of static mesh spawners. Static mesh spawner, and I'm going to add a mesh entry. And the static mesh I'm going to use is a poppy. And I find that variation 12 is a decent amount. And I'm going to set it to no collision. And then if I wanted more poppies as options, I could just add more mesh entries here and choose different static meshes. But I'm just going to go with one for now, for the sake of uh, completing this tutorial in a decent amount of time. So I'm just copying the static mesh spawner five times, and I will change the static mesh that each one of them is using. This one I will use Amaryllis. And I've just downloaded these from Quixel Bridge. These flowers are different sizes, so they're going to look a little strange. Strangia. And this one I like variation 10. Crown beard. Variation 1 seems to be okay. I'm just choosing variations with lots of flowers so they create a decent flower appearance without having to choose too many different static meshes. And this last one is going to be three-cornered garlic. And I want variation one for this one as well. Okay, so now I can hook all of these up. And 
let me take debug off. And there we go, we've got a bunch of plants. They're obviously squares, which could be okay if you are creating um, a plant farm or something. Um, I, I could see this being nice, but there are two things here. One is these plants are of different heights, so let me go and correct that now while I can really obviously see them. And then I'm also going to add a bunch of scatter to them so they no longer look like squares, they look like a little more random scattering. So let's see, I'll normalize everything to the height of the tallest ones. So I can start with the garlic, and it looks like the garlic's going to need to be about one and a half times as large. Let's try that. So I can add a transform points in here. And I'm not going to worry about a size range of these flowers because I'll control the size range at the same time for everything. Oop, that's 25, 2.5, 2.5, and For the future versions, I'm going to recheck this lock, and uniform scale is on. And 2.5 is a little big, so let's just do 2. There we go. That, that looks okay. And now let's see, what else can I do? All right, the poppies. Looks like 2 might be a little big for those, so I can grab this transform points again, and I'll just hook the poppy up into there. And for this one, I'll try 1.5. Uh, no, let's go with 2. I think 2 will look OK. All right, that looks fine to me. They're a little bigger, but they're also a little less dense of a flower, so I think it'll look fine. And let's see, these yellow ones. These yellow ones are fairly tall, but they're not very dense compared to the hydrangeas. So let's just make them a little bigger as well. I think 1.5 might look okay, and that is this one. I'm holding control to break the link and carry it over to the next one. All right, so let's try 1.5 for these. And there we go. So now I have basically normalized the size of each flower, so each patch looks relatively the same. So when I actually create my field, everything will look pretty good. It might look a little more realistic if you were to control the weight of each flower separately, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm keeping it simple. So now that I have that, let me go ahead and drag this over, and I'll put some extra logic in here to make these things be a more random scattering. So first thing, I'll make a transform points. And I'll hook that up in here. And so this transform points is going to affect every single other flower all at once. So first off, I will scatter them. Let's start with negative 100, 100, negative 100, 100. I don't need to worry about the z-axis. They don't need to go up and down. And so that looks a little better, but they're still obviously squares. So let's try 200. looking a little better, but I can still see some square edges, and in this case where this patch of yellow flowers should kind of connect, you can tell there's a distinct edge, So, and these pink flowers too, so let's try 300. That's looking pretty good to me. So now I'll toss this into self-pruning. There we go, self-pruning works okay, but these things are still really overlapping each other. So before the self-pruning node, I'm going to actually use a bounds modifier. And if I inspect this self-pruning node, I see that the bounds are all negative five to five. So let me put in a bounds modifier here. And I'm just gonna make these things five times the size. So I'll scale them, bounds min and max five, and I'll hook that up to the self-pruning. 
And there we go. So basically, I've made each point a little larger so that when I do self-pruning, it takes out more flowers from around itself. And now in this transform points node, let me add some rotation to the flowers. So 0 to 360 rotation. And I'll also add a little scale. I'm going to scale them a little bit down because I find I like them when they come in at about knee level. If I turn off this debug and play, I've got a decent field of plants. So the last thing I'll do is add grass in the points where it's bare. To do that, I already have this reference of all the points that are bare. So I just need to take away any point that's a flower from this, and I will have the places where I can place my grass. So for that, I can plug in this into a difference node. And I'm going to change the density function to binary, and I'll drop the self-pruning into the difference. And now if I check this out, you can see that there are points missing around where each of these flowers are. Looking from below gives a little better idea. So there we go, we got some scattering. And now I can plug this into a static mesh spawner. And I am going to use the mesh, let's see if I can remember it, Kikuyu, yes, Kikuyu Grass. And I found the variation 10 seems to work okay. And let me turn off debug here. All right, so we've got some grass, but you can see that my frames per second are fairly low. So one trick I've found to making this grass perform a little better while still looking okay is to add a transform points. And a self pruning. So let's take a look at what this self pruning is doing. It goes from 40,000 points and afterwards it's still 40,000 points, and that's because I haven't changed the bounds, so these are obviously still overlapping each other. So what I can do is scale the bounds with a bounds modifier. And I'll plug this in before the difference because we don't need the grass to be too close to the flowers either if we are changing the size of the grass. Removed all the grass because I removed this. And let's hook it back up. So the grass is a little sparser now. And now in this transform points, I can change the grass to one and let's uncheck uniform scale and uncheck these boxes. So one to three on the X and Y axis, and I'll leave it just at one on the Z axis. And so now the grass is a little less regular, but, um, it still looks like it's having pretty good coverage. Instead of 40,000 points, let's see how many we have. 13,000, so that's a third of the amount of points. And you can go even further and remove more points and scale it up even more if you find that uh, you want to. And let's see, so the grass is really tall right now, so I can actually set it down in size. Let's set it 0.4 to 0.6 in height. And so that's a little more mashed down and there we go, we got some grass, we got some flowers. The flowers are clumped together in patches. And it looks like a decent field. So there's one more thing we need to fix. And you can see that when this graph is on the slope, some of the points don't spawn, and some of the points are in the air. So those are two separate problems, and they can be fixed really easily with the same thing. The first one is because we're using a PCG graph to spawn this, and the top of the slope is out of the range of the graph. The second problem is we are setting the large patch points to fall on the ground, but then we are moving the individual flowers on the XY axis, which raises them off the ground. 
So the fix to this is to put a projection node later in the graph. And so what I'm going to do is instead of the landscape feeding into the surface sampler, I'm going to just feed the input into the surface sampler. And so what that does is the plants all spawn at the top of the PCG graph regardless of where the land is. And then I'll just add a projection node right before we split all the points up. And I'll do the same thing for the grass, right before, let's see, right before the transform points is a good point. And so what this is going to do is, at the very last instant, we'll just project onto the landscape once, instead of projecting at the start and then again. So for the flowers, I'll just use landscape height. And for the grass, I've actually found that using landscape and having the grass rotate to the landscape looks a little bit better. And there we go. Everything's conforming to the landscape, and it looks quite nice. Enjoy.